So, uh, very good morning once again to you, Dr. Reddy, uh, our esteemed speaker for today, and uh, all the fellows of INE and uh, entire members of the engineering community. So, it is a great occasion. In India, we celebrate 15 September as the National Engineers Day to commemorate the birth of one of the greatest engineers that this country has ever seen. I'm talking about, of course, Sir M. Vishweshwaraya, who was born on September 15th, 1860, and he was a centurion. He died in 1962 at the age of 101. Now, Sir Vishweshwaraya is remembered and very widely respected as truly a stalwart of India's engineering intervention. He was the one who not only constructed, designed and constructed the first major water reservoir and dam, which is known as the Krishna Raja Sagar Dam in Mysore. He also was responsible for designing and patenting the first water floodgate system and creating the Kharakwasla Reservoir way back in 1903. Sir Vishweshwaraya created very many important engineering system development interventions for flood protection, irrigation, water distribution, construction of dams and bridges and roads. He was truly a pioneer. Sir Vishweshwaraya used to say science is about knowing and engineering is about doing. And I see this particular statement very prophetic and exactly resonating with what our Honorable Prime Minister mentioned at the launch of IMPRINT in 2015, November, wherein he said, science is universal, but engineering must address to the local needs, aspirations, and challenges. So with this background, Indian National Academy of Engineering is very happy to organize today's event of National Engineers Day. And we are very happy and proud to have Dr. G. Satish Reddy, the scientific advisor to Raksha Mantri, as the keynote speaker for this particular event. Dr. Reddy is credited to have spearheaded India's indigenous development of defense systems and technologies which includes missiles and strategic systems, fighter aircrafts, unmanned aerial defense systems, underwater systems, radar systems, strategic materials, armaments, and futuristic technologies. He's currently the chairman of the governing body of the Aeronautical Development Agency, which is credited to have developed the fourth generation light combat aircraft known as Tejas, which is now being inducted into the active service. Dr. Reddy received his bachelor's in electronics and communication engineering from JNTU and then subsequently master's and PhD also from JNTU Hyderabad and subsequently joined DRDL Hyderabad in 1986. He moved to research center Imarat, the very famed defense and research and development organization developed by none other than Dr. Abdul Kalam. He was there right from the beginning, and he, he, his contribution as navigation scientist and system manager made him an instantly important member of the community. Dr. Reddy was uh, made the distinguished scientist in September 2014, and then subsequently he joined DRDO, or the Defense Ministry, as the scientific advisor in May 2015. Subsequently, he rose to the level of Secretary DDRND and Chairman of DRDO in August 2018. Dr. Reddy continues to be the scientific advisor to the Raksha Mantri now. He made several important technological uh, developments in the country, particularly in the area of defense. For example, during his days as director RCI, he he's credited to have developed imaging infrared seekers, radio frequency seekers, integrated avionics modules, 
and many such innovative systems for onboard applications. As a Director General of Missiles and Strategic Systems, he was the lead scientist to develop NAG, Rudram, QRSAM, and several other long-range and medium-range guided missiles. India's first successful test of anti-satellite missile under the Mission Shakti program was successfully executed under his leadership. He's also, he was also a most active member and leader for developing several other air defense systems like Astra, Akash, and so on. Dr. Reddy has a very distinguished human side. During the recent COVID pandemic, he came forward and made use of the huge network of the R&D setup in the DRD organizations. And his intervention led to development of 50 different technologies for combating COVID-19 pandemic, out of which 75 products emerged, which were transferred to about 100 industries. Dr. Reddy received several awards during his long illustrious career, which includes honorary fellowship and silver medal awarded by the Royal Aeronautical Society London, which was a very distinguished achievement because he was the one to have received this after 100 years. This award was in, his, in recognition of his contributions for indigenous design, development, and deployment of diversified missile systems, aerospace vehicles, guided weapons, and avionic technologies in India. Dr. Reddy also received awards from the American Institute of Aeronautics and Astronautics Missile System Award. He received Aeronautical Prize, National Systems Gold Medal, National Design Award, Institute of Engineers in India, and IEEE USA Award for Engineering Excellence, and the Homi J. Bhava Gold Medal. Dr. Reddy also has been conferred several DSC honoris causa by different universities in the country. And most importantly, he is an engineer with a purpose, and we certainly take pride in, in, our, in sharing with you all that Dr. Reddy also happens to be a fellow of the Indian National Academy of Engineering. So with these few words, now it's my privilege to welcome Dr. G. Satish Reddy to deliver the Distinguished Engineers Day lecture and enlighten us about his visions of self-reliance or Atmanirbharta in engineering. Over to you, Dr. Reddy. Uh, thank you, Professor Manna. Uh, very good morning, Professor uh, Indranil Manna, President, Indian National Academy of Engineering, and all other eminent engineers who are present on this occasion, who are listening through the video conferencing mode, and many other engineers, students who are all present. Once again, very good morning and Namaskar to all of you. My best wishes to all the engineers on the Engineers Day. We, we all proudly remember the great engineer of this country, Sir Mokshagandam Vishweshwaraya, on whose birth anniversary we celebrate it as Engineer State. I must compliment INEAE for conducting this Engineer's Day lecture on the occasion of the Engineer's Day. I thank Professor Manna for giving me this opportunity to, to be among us you and share some of my thoughts in the current scenario of the country. That's why the topic chosen is towards Atmanirbhar Bharat, the role of engineers. India, particularly in the last five to eight years, has been going through lots of evolutions with the Honorable Prime Minister giving the call make in India, where we are not able to make many things in the country. We are trying to, or uh, we are importing many things from outside. 
and so make them in the country with the support from outside or without the support from outside or as a giant collaboration or with the technologies whichever way it is make the things in the country this is the first call given by the honorable prime minister many things have happened many systems are being produced in the country many technologies have come to the country and we are producing many things in the country today and then the next call given by honorable prime minister is atmanirbhar bharat self reliant india when we say atmanirbhar bharat we conceive it as the meaning of it is that we should have the capabilities within the country for designing for developing and also the capability to produce them in volumes so the meaning is you should have the complete know how and know why of the complete technologies and the production capability with the necessary infrastructure what is required this is what atmanirbhar bharat so when you look at what the capabilities have been already established in the country and what are the current gaps and how do we need to go ahead is one of the very important aspect and in this journey the major role is played by engineers friends when you look around today living aside the environment and weather anything what you look at around talk about today the communication systems the video conferencing what we are doing the cell phones what we have the trains what we have the roads what we have the medical devices what we have the computers what we have are all out of engineering which have emerged so the engineers play a major role in seeing that technological innovation is the one which makes nations prosperity and the central piece of such innovation is engineering the engineers play a critical role in developing new technologies and systems in all aspects of life from communications transportation health care entertainment and what not in the day to day life what every common man needs today in doing so engineering activity itself not only creates good manufacturing jobs good pays but also saw seeds for new r and d challenges to create next generation products so the engineering plays a major role in the prosperity of the nation and what we said the current today's topic of atmanirbhar bharat in the country needs to be a completely self reliant in this science is foundational to engineering and the associated analysis is an inevitable step to discover and learn engineering science analysis and publication of research results are only intermediate steps to the ultimate goal of engineering that is creating synthesizing better mouse trap to address social needs this is important the social needs are met through engineering various aspects of engineering whether it is to the urban environment or the rural environment or the environment as a whole 
the engineering plays a major role. Investment in scientific research produces indispensable knowledge. To create nation's wealth, we must apply that knowledge through rigorous engineering and practical development of new products and new processes. It not only enhances our economic strength, but also our national security. When I talk about security, I'll touch upon this area in various other aspects, what all security we need to have for the country. So, when we look at the whole gamut of Atmanirbhar Bharat, self reliant India, and the role of engineers, and when the points what I've mentioned now, we need to recapitulate what capabilities the country has developed, what are the gaps, and what we need to do in the advanced technologies and systems also. When you look at the capabilities what have been developed, look at the Department of Space, a lot have been achieved. A lot of rocket science or rocket engineering, multiple vehicles, the PSLV, the work horse, which has played multiple roles, multiple missions, successive successes, putting many satellites in the orbit or the moon mission, or the Mars mission, or the geostationary launch vehicle taking into the geostationary orbit with our own indigenous cryogenic engines and moving ahead for the human space program, space shuttle, and many other areas. A lot of work is going on, a lot of advancements, a lot of new things, a lot of new technologies are coming up. and industry is also jumping into the area of space and working in a big way startups and major industries coming to the national security particularly the defense and which actually i belong to let me deal little in depth into that many technological achievements and many areas country has become self-sufficient whether it is missiles radars electronic warfare systems or avac system and the armaments tanks aircrafts submarines ships many areas if you look at it a lot of achievements in the country today today the country could develop its own indigenous fighter aircraft and it is being produced now it is being inducted now into the air force 83 members of lca mark 1a have been ordered by indian air force the single largest number which hindustan aeronautics limited is producing uh, today and a lot of work is going on in new areas of the fighter aircraft is one thing. Look at radars. Many radars have been developed in the country for ground application or ship application or airborne applications. Talking about phased array radars, AESA, active electronic scanning array radars, onboard aircraft, many things long range, short range, medium range, miniaturized radars, even the radars which can detect drones have been developed and number of radars are inducted and necessary technologies which are required for that are also developed in the country and infrastructure has been established in the country to produce those whether it is gallium arsenide, gallium nitride technologies, TR modules and that. Similarly in the area of missiles, many missiles and related technologies have been developed and Technologies have been established here in the country. And whether it is long range, short range, ballistic missiles, air to air missiles, or surface to air missiles, many things have been developed. And country has 
develop the ballistic missile defense program also which very few nations in the world have developed such technologies and we are one and the evolution of that has also country has demonstrated the anti satellite capability neutralizing the satellite in the low earth orbit with a direct hit technologies having precision of few centimeters has been demonstrated making the country become the fourth nation after russia america and china india is the fourth nation similarly we have developed our own avat systems which are inducted today we have developed our own torpedoes which are being inducted today which are inducted today and we have developed our own tanks which are again inducted and new tanks are being developed today and in the artillery gun in the 155 mm artillery gun the country has developed the world's longest range 155 mm artillery gun which friends you have seen it first hand on the 15th of august today from the red fort it was juice and the honorable prime minister has announced that after 75 years we are hearing the sound of the firing of the gun which is an indigenous gun we also developed ourselves submarines which are the most complicated things we have developed our own communication systems and we also have developed which recently is commissioned the indigenous aircraft carrier and with the indigenous content being very high the complete steel used in that is indigenously developed steel today both for the ships and submarines we are using the steel what is been developed in the country the software defined radios have been developed today the complicated seekers many other systems which have been developed in the country and today country has achieved self reliance capabilities in these areas similarly when you look at various other engineering things lot of achievements are there in the country today which our engineers have today the roads world class roads what we are building today in the country the pace at which the number of meters per day what we are able to lay the roads has gone up tremendously meeting the world standards the border roads at very high altitude our border roads organization which is making at various places which are engineering marvels the tunneling capabilities the tunnels which are being developed in the country at various places particularly in the high altitude areas the capability to work in the most adverse weather even our people are able to work today in the months of december and january also we are able to develop we are able to produce completely ships ourselves in the country we are able to make many equipment what are required for the country ourselves today look at automobiles various other systems today country is able to produce within the country whatever are required for our applications many communication equipment today communication basing with the communication systems what are required today are many other things we are able to do and getting into many other new areas also today but then when you look at there are still a lot of gaps what we need to do in the country today or say that where we need to take it to the next step or where we need to see that the country doesn't import and we need to 
make them in the country itself is very important. One is, I start with, always I say, materials is one of the very important areas where any country should be self-sufficient. We need to do a lot in the area of materials. A lot of work has gone in, as I said today, the ships, submarines and many other things, what is the seal required, other areas, what is the seal required, both in the public and private sector, lots of steel is being produced for various applications. But then we still need to have rare earths, tungsten, cobalt, chromium, nickel, refractory elements such as niobium, hafnium, zirconium, many other areas. We need to do a lot of work in this. One is, we have only lean ores. Extraction need to be seen, viability of economics. And how do we actually have the elements available to the country? How the materials are available? We need to look at the technologies which are required for processing extraction of this is one of the very important areas what we need to look at. Trying to establish pilot scale plants for these areas is one of the very important things which we need to see. Even though there is a good amount of research going on in materials at various places, but then establishing the pilot plants and taking them to the production capability is very, very uh, important things what we need to see. And second thing is making this happen uh, fast is one of the important things which is called accelerated materials development. This is one area where we need to look at. We can't have the development taking 10 years, 15 years and things like that and that we need to look into it what is required. And particularly when we are talking about today, the development of drones which the country has moved fast ahead and lots of industries are developing varieties of drones and the materials which are required for it, the magnets which are required for it, the rare earth permanent magnets for various applications is one thing what we need to look at, concentrate on that, what are required for it. Similarly, today batteries are playing a major role in electric vehicles and things like that. That is one area where the, again we need to look at, concentrate that we are able to make the power supplies, batteries and all required electrolytes or cathode or anode, all the materials for varieties of applications including the electric vehicles which are going to come, which are coming up now is one of the important areas. Biomaterials is another important area which is very important which actually I will touch upon in this uh, little later on the uh, medical devices and medical equipment is one thing where we need to concentrate and work upon that. And similarly functional materials what are required for electronics manufacturing is one of the important areas what we need to look at. Particularly when we talk about the materials, any country if it has to be self-reliant, it has to be having its own resources, processing technologies and policies for the materials. From there when we move, next important aspect is, is manufacturing technologies, innovative manufacturing technologies. Any country which needs to produce the systems at low cost, high pace, green energy and high reliability and everything at low cost and low power and what not. The innovative manufacturing is a very important aspect what we need to look at. And we need to continuously do research 
continuously work on various aspects of it and try to see that we are having a innovative manufacturing capabilities in the country. Whether it is we are talking about today additive manufacturing, our industry 4.0 based on the IoT and various sensors, or look at across the spectrum whether it is textile engineering or marine engineering or various other aspects what we need to do for manufacturing in various areas including composites and related areas is one aspect what we need to see in fact today the manufacturing sector is contributing about 17 percent or so around that for the gdp and this has to go up at least to 25 percent that is where actually industry flourishes. Number of jobs created for the people is one area, whether it is MSMEs or large scale industries, we need to concentrate. And particularly in this one thing I need to mention here is when we say manufacturing, let's say you talk about across the country, all of us engineers know various workshops and plants, what we have. The machinery, the equipment, what we are using also has to be indigenous. We can't be only using the equipment and producing some product out of it or a tool out of it or whatever it is. Whether you talk about the CNC machines, lathe machines, whatever it is, three axis, five axis, seven axis machines, or when we are talking about today, additive manufacturing for some small component to various bigger equipment, it's very important that we need to have that equipment also manufactured here in the country. Likewise, when you look at, there are lots of gaps and areas where we need to concentrate today. Particularly coming again back to the um, defense and related areas, whether it is the infrastructure, what is required for the wind tunnels or the high altitude testings are talking about various sensors and detectors that will be IR sensors or other detectors or various sensors, MEM sensors, NEM sensors, technologies for the MEMS and NEMS which are required to be made in the country for various applications is one of the important things what we need to look at. Semiconductors, what we need for various applications civilian applications or military applications or space applications and the semiconductor special devices what are required are very important things which we need to look at these gaps. Also the aero engines is one of the important aspects. Today we need to develop engines in the country what are required for various aircraft applications start with the fighter aircrafts and other aircrafts and then go on up to various other areas where we still have to whether you talk about today lasers high power lasers or high power electromagnetics and various other technologies which are required need to be developed here in the country and similarly when you look at other areas whether we are talking about today communication equipment is one thing when we are moving from 4G to 5G and 5G to next other areas of 6G and other things, the complete equipment, what I require, the back end equipment, need to develop in the country, need to produce here in the country. We can't be having the back end equipment coming from outside. That is one area where we uh, need to look at. Similarly, one of the most important things, country, a common man onwards everyone requires is medical devices and equipment. Common man needs to have that affordable prices, lower prices, which are very expensive today out of the imported things need to be developed. So we need to concentrate a lot on the engineering aspects of developing various devices and equipment which are required in the medical side. Similarly, when you talk about this country, we need to look at various technologies which are required for the food security. We need to produce a lot 
look at various other countries who are producing wheat or other things compared to the vast area which is agriculture possible cultivatable land what we have and the remaining water security water resources making the available with the so much of natural resources and so much of rainfall what we have in the country how do you preserve even though we have done a lot in the hydro projects and energy related from hydropower and all that is one thing what we need to look at agriculture and water security both producing enormous uh, giving the food security to the country and then exporting it in a big way and similarly when you look at energy sector is one area where whatever we are done with the hydropower projects the other areas need to look at into whether it is the solar power producing basic cell onwards the complete technology here in the country or all non conventional energies sources what we need to use it today right from wind power and various other things are bio energy what we need to produce here in the country this is one more important aspect what we need to look at it similarly environment security the type of weather conditions the weather what it plays in this country we need to look at engineering solutions for it in fact i remember one of the conventions what ina had was the subject was engineering interventions for sundarbans how we actually the engineering interventions based on the conditions there based on the sea conditions there we can convert that as engineering interventions to make a common man and many other facilities coming up in sundarban this is one of the areas where we need to look at many things today the roads far the indian conditions when you lay a road one thing is laying the roads faster and tunneling and what not and all that bridges and everything how we are able to do fast and also sustainability of the road for the indian weather conditions so these are all the things what we need to look at as i mentioned just now some time back the equipment heavy engineering equipment sophisticated equipment what not is required in various uh, uh, aspects need to be aircrafts transport aircraft we need to develop here in the country so these are some of the areas what i thought we need to mention to fill the gaps today what we have it is very important if a country has to be self reliant means we are not dependent on anyone else for any of these critical things and which country should not be dependent on somebody and then you are bogged down by that dependency so we need to fill these gaps and that is where engineering interventions are required engineers have to play a major role to see that we are able to make these things today particularly at a fast pace i am saying is time is very very essence today when we have to catch up with the world and fill in the gaps we can't be doing it for a taking a longer time and we need to find interventions where we are able to do the things in quickly and try to fill in the gaps and we are able to catch up with the world see this is one of the very important things what we need to look at unless you fill these gaps and unless we come up the gap remains continuously with respect to time frame if you take it longer time then the world also moves so and you keep on catching up so that is where <coughs> we need to look at how we are able to fill in the gaps very quickly is the most important thing and that is how the country becomes atmanirbhar so the role of engineer as i mentioned in the beginning what is engineering what is science how engineer actually makes a product and is coming out producibility of that product is what important what engineers how to play interventions of engineering is very very essential from here when we say when we need to fill in the gaps there is one more aspect what we need to today definitely look at india can't be continuously be a developing nation we have to become a developed nation we have to become an advanced nation with 
many advanced technologies being developed here in the country. If you look at the Honorable Prime Minister's next call is make for work. Make in India, Atmanir Bharat, make for work. When we say that the country has to be an economically strong nation, a powerful nation, and prosperous nation, I strongly believe that technology is the one actually what can make the country strong and prosper. And so we need to develop advanced technologies here in the country. See, friends, one thing is that we have been a technology follower and we are now catching up with the world. Meaning, elsewhere in the advanced nations, technologies and systems are developed, and then we also develop it later. And in the areas, various areas, what we have mentioned, we also cut up with the world and we became. Uh, fourth nation, fifth nation, sixth nation, seventh nation, tenth nation, whatever it is. It has to change now. Now the technologies and systems we have to develop in the same similar timelines as what advanced nations are developing or we need to be first in developing this system. So we need to work on the technologies which are required for tomorrow, today or yesterday. And we need to identify those technologies. There may be multiple areas and enormous areas, but we need to work on those, whether right from the science. It is engineers who have to drive the science also, what research you need and which becomes fundamental to this engineering for developing the technologies and innovations. And you identify the area, making the research organizations in the country, academic institutes in the country, work on these new technologies, new areas and new science areas which actually transforms into technologies is one of the important things which we need to today look at and take up. Otherwise, we will never be in the category of developed nations or advanced nations where we are taking the technology. That step we need to look at and take and work on various technologies what are required. I can mention some of them today particularly when we Talking about it, I was just mentioning about various material technologies, manufacturing technologies. In fact, we need to create these in the manufacturing, various innovative manufacturing institutes in the country and try to see that we are trying to have most advanced innovative manufacturing technologies are available to our industry who can produce it faster pace and at a lower cost with, of course, the sustained good quality is one of the things and similarly when you look at many areas today emerging areas whether we are talking about artificial intelligence in each and every product building artificial intelligence producing artificial intelligence skill set in the country similarly cyberspace is another important area a lot of work is gone going on a lot of academic institutes are introduced courses in cyber technologies in artificial intelligence but a lot need to be done and we need to be if the nation has to be secure in the given environment today we need to do a lot of research in the cyber related areas and work in those technologies similarly today you talk about directed energies talk about underwater systems underwater communications are the communication systems and equipment and related many other areas as i said the technologies space based technologies or situational awareness many things are in the border surveillance related things in particular i am talking about defense these are all the areas where we need to look at yes we have done a good amount of work in drones but a lot need to be done a lot of industries need to come a lot of research need to go on the indigenous content in all these things has to reach a very high value. So these areas are the one which we need to look at. And I have already mentioned in other areas, not need to be done, which are actually required for a common man. I think as we engineers, one aspect is for this country, which is heavily based on rural environment. 
So we need to work concentratedly on the rural areas also. The technologies, low cost technologies, the technologies available with the technologies which can made out of the available natural resources around that, making the every farmer or every uh, uh, rural person is able to use the technologies and is able to economically grow and creating the infrastructure in the rural areas based on the available resources that is one of the important areas what we need to look at. Getting engineering interventions, whether in the agricultural area or other areas, making a village self-sufficient and ensuring the exodus from villages, rural areas to urban areas is done. And similarly, government has taken a lot of steps and it is we engineers who need to see that the urban area, all the necessary facilities with a clean environment, non-polluted environment, and with the necessary facilities for living in good conditions is one of the important things along with the digitization what we are working on. So these are all many areas which we need to work in the country to see that we are agriculturally rich and rural areas are economically strong with the necessary facilities. Urban areas are having all clean, good, digital facilities available, clean, green environment available, and the automobile, the transportation, whether it is the air or road or on the sea, the transportation facilities and environment, weather related studies, engineering interventions in the weather related and environment related things, communication related, and many other areas is the one where we need to look at and come out with first of its kind technologies. That is how this country will be becoming prosperous and country will be becoming economically stronger and country becomes safe and secure, not just the borders, our defense, our national security, food security, water security, energy security, economic security and whatnot and all that areas we will be having the security. For this, I'm sure we need to build right from the beginning, right from the college days, the students, the innovation becomes the fundamental and the brain gets tuned to innovation with the basic sciences. And so the scientific research and technologies development with innovation is one thing what we need to develop right from our engineering colleges where we are producing a lot in the country, 1.3 to 1.4 million a year engineers and having these engineers, having continuously coming out with innovations in technology. One very good thing today is, compared to about five years back, where there were few hundreds of startups, today the nation, what has reported by the DPIIT is more than about close to 75,000 startups are there. It's a great change. Many of our brilliant students are now staying back in the country, are coming back to this country. This is again a major change. So this is the environment what actually can ensure that there are advanced technologies developed and innovations are developed. And this culture of these innovations coming from the college, the skill set coming from the college, with the necessary support which is being provided by the various schemes of the government to promote innovation, startups, and funding mechanisms which have come up. And we need to work on these transit technologies, new technologies, and make the country completely self-sufficient. And we are able to export it to the entire world. Every world, entire country in the world has the products coming from India. That's what we need to put it as a aim and we engineers have to produce those products. Let us take that vow and work for, towards that advanced technologies, innovation based technologies, products coming up and the country is able to export and making the dream of the leadership of the country and ambitions of this nation to make the country is a strong, 
economically and becoming prosperous nation. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. And I'm sure we all will be able to make this country proud in the coming years. And my best wishes once again on the Engineers Day and thanking INAE for giving me this opportunity to share some of my thoughts. Thank you very much and Jai Hind. Namaskar. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Reddy. I mean, it really, uh, this 50 minutes discourse shows that uh, where you started and where you have transcended over the years, you have actually created a roadmap for the entire engineering community for the country. It is true that uh, a system engineering requires input from all quarters. And when you started talking initially about the major inroads and contributions made by the Ministry of Defense, uh, we all thought possibly uh, you are more going to dwell upon the contributions made by this ministry alone. But eventually where you reached was actually truly a roadmap for the entire country. And what is very heartening is that you uh, charted out the path for the entire community. You talked about initially all those communication, computers, applications. You stressed upon the needs for developing hardware and strategic materials, pilot skill interventions. You stressed upon the manufacturing as a major uh, vehicle for country's future progress and stressed upon the need for adopting the artificial intelligence and machine learning based modern designing approaches. And finally, you showed us how the country has changed in the recent past to have created 75,000 plus startups, all made by our youth belonging to the engineering and technology domain. So certainly the future can only be brighter than what we possibly can anticipate. So before we actually uh, thank you finally, I just would wanted to figure out if anybody in the audience would like to uh, interact with Dr. Reddy very briefly, would like to make any short, inter short comments or observations or even pose uh, some specific query to him because he certainly can uh, enlighten us about uh, some of the major initiatives that the government of India has undertaken or might be undertaking in the future. Um, is there any question? I think there's some question about the infrastructure required for uh, various engineering departments. Um, so, of course, infrastructure is something that we all know are very much needed. But would you like to comment, Dr. Reddy, about the kind of infrastructure augmentation required in engineering institutions to equip our students to take up very challenging projects? Uh, uh, definitely, in all the engineering institutions, uh, infrastructure plays a major role in for any student to come up with uh, engineering solutions, understanding and innovations and all that. But at the same time, we wouldn't be able to go with major infrastructure in every institution. Need to identify the institutions where what infrastructure need to be uh, incorporated. And from various departments in the government of India, leaving aside the Department of Higher Education, the departments like uh, uh, defense r and uh, we are talking about uh, atomic energy or CSIR or biotechnology department, DBT, various institutes are establishing various infrastructure in the form of funding and things like that, which we need to actually, rightly the question is asked, which we need to enhance in the academic institutes. But I think also the question was related to more and more infrastructure, uh, which is required as a nation also, which I have actually mentioned in my talk which we need to see that these uh, gaps which we have or these structures that need to be established is an important aspect which we need to um, look at. I think the government is looking into various areas of this through various departments and trying to establish this infrastructure which is required. Infrastructure is an essential requirement to make this country develop this 
technologies and products. Sure. Yeah, I mean, investment is important, but utilization is even more important. And we actually have to pull up our resources and make sure that we are able to share it well. Um, but this question was important. I wanted to take up because it came from a student named Viranga Shiva. So, uh, I mean, students are also listening to you very carefully, Dr. Reddy. Uh, very important. It is nice to know that students are also listening. And in fact, uh, my stress in the end was more on the students. They are the ones who have to come up with more innovations and who are coming up and doing in this country. And uh, that is where we need to support uh, various incubation centers with the infrastructure and various institutions and also funding the uh, startups to come out with the development where we government is able to fund. That is where many schemes have come up in the country, particularly in the defense. When I say the technology development funding and IDEX, which is supporting these startups and incubation centers in a big way to develop various things. Absolutely. Dr. Reddy, throughout your speech, you always stressed upon that the country's progress and development to a large extent depend upon our ability to harness the resources and make fruitful engineering intervention. So futuristic growth will largely depend upon uh, the excellence that we can achieve in engineering and technology. Now, in this respect, uh, would you like to make one last comment about the role that INE should play and which way INE actually can make these things happen in the country? Kind of an advice from you? Um, uh, INE has a very important role to play in this particular aspect. One is suggesting coming out with policies and mechanisms which are required to take this forward from INAE and submitting to the government and making sure the government actually um, uh, is able to clearly understand and then implement these uh, policies and mechanisms what are required this is one thing. Second aspect is as playing a catalyst role in synergizing the efforts of academia, R&D organizations, the government and the industry, looking at various aspects, looking at the gaps and looking at the areas what need to be done, who can do what and everyone plays what his role he can play. In this, again, INA should play a kind of role. This is what I feel the major two roles which INA should play. Absolutely. So thank you so much, Dr. Reddy. So with this, we come to the end of this uh, particular uh, event. Uh, we all would uh, certainly agree at the end that uh, what Dr. Reddy charted out in front of us was uh, a roadmap that we, from the nation as a whole, should very seriously pursue. Uh, on behalf of Indian National Academy of Engineering and on my personal behalf, Dr. Reddy, it's my proud privilege to thank you once more. And let us also, on behalf of the entire engineering fraternity, remind ourselves, each one of us, that the country for its progress and to realize the dream of the Honorable Prime Minister must pursue engineering with only one single mantra, and that is excellence. So we should achieve excellence in every respect of engineering technological interventions. Thank you so much, Dr. Reddy, and thanks to all the participants for this very important event, for joining us and for listening to Dr. Reddy. Uh, so this recorded, this lecture is recorded and will certainly be uploaded in the public viewing system. Thank you once more. Namaskar and Jai Hind.